and also to watch that video. Yeah, okay, cool. We're gonna do a CMA. So, Tommy, you here? Yes, sir. Cool, so Tommy Tropea, um, guys, watch out, man. Get his autograph now, because you're probably not gonna be able to uh, track him down in about a year, this guy's on fire. Um, so, uh, get his rookie card <laughs> right now, because it's at a very low value right now. But yeah, Tommy, uh, on our one-on-one, so we do one-on-ones with our agents on our team. One of the questions in our one-on-ones is, uh, what are you struggling with? What can you use some help with? And Tommy, what did you say you were struggling with and could use some help with this last week? Uh, just CMAs, like being able to do it quick and efficient with clients and be able to just break it down in front of them. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. That's perfect. So what Tommy's talking about here is, um, Tommy's talking about CMA. So we say, uh, Gil, what's a CMA? Uh, it is real estate jargon for competitive market, comparable market analysis or competitive market analysis. It's an MLS. Yeah, we don't even know. It's the CMA. It tells you the value of your house. It's consumer market analysis, whatever. But um, yeah, so what happens is when you have someone, when you're going to someone's house to list their house, um, uh, one of the most important things that they want to know is they want to know the value of their house. Like, what's my house worth? Like, so, uh, so when I, when we talk about going to someone's house, we say, cool. Well, when I get to you, how, get, when I get to your house, what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to do a consumer market analysis. And what that means is I'm going to do exactly what an appraiser does. Um, I'm going to go back about six months to a year and I'm going to, I'm going to go about a half a mile from your house. And I'm going to pull all the active under contract and sold units, uh, on or off the market, similar to yours. Again, active under contracting and close. I'm going to bring them to your attention, and then uh, we're going to. I'm going to be able to tell you what your house is worth. Another thing that I'll say is, I'll say I'm going to give you a couple different values. Right, the market's a little nuts right now. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple different values. I'm going to tell you what I think an appraiser would appraise your house at. I'm going to tell you what I think we should list your house at. And the market's a little nutty right now. I'm going to tell you what I think you probably will sell your house for. Um, and when you say that, you're saying something different. You're giving them, some, you know, you're getting them kind of excited, uh, and you sound really professional. Um, and so on a market analysis, what we're going to do is when we go to the property, that's the first thing we talk about is price. So, and this, we're not going to, this is not going to be a training about a listing presentation. We already did that. We have that, you know, you can view that on YouTube, but uh, we're going to talk about how we get to a value. Um, what we do. So in our organization, we set a lot of appointments. Sam Mark set two today. That's awesome, Sam. Um, so Thank you. Uh, we set a lot of appointments and then what we do is we, um, you want to explain the process, man? We pop, we pop it on the calendar. We pull, or should I just jump right in and do a CMA? Uh, we can explain it. Yeah, you, want, you want to kind of, what do you, you're out there in the, Gil's been on 40, oh, not, Gil's been on like over 100 listing appointments this year. So uh, you want to jump in here before we actually do a CMA? Sure. Um, yeah, so basically, for, you know, if we go through the whole process, the, Whoever makes the call and sets the appointment will set up a calendar event. And the calendar event will have the location of the house in, our, in the Google Calendar, so I can just click on it and drive to it from wherever I'm going and have the person's name. It'll have a little bit of the backstory from their notes. It'll have the um, Zillow and RPR numbers, so the realist tax record, it's basically a estimate for the realist tax record database. Those are all like computer algorithmically generated estimates that are one's consumer facing one is kind of professional facing um and then if we then we'll have you know basically the, uh, a basic cma kind of pulled up into the, saved into the mls for that but basically to generate that um you know we'll have we'll have those numbers just to have a ballpark age if, the other thing that's in there is if we're qualifying them on the phone we're talking to them like and one of the questions we'll ask is like hey like good bad or indifferent zillow says that your house is worth 650 how do you feel about that number? And you're just throwing a number out there. It's sort of like a poker game or um, negotiation. Like the smart clients will want you to tell them what your number is. Um, it's always good to, it's advantageous to the conversation if you know what they think it's worth or what they want out of it. Um, Cause it just helps you. It does, it's not being manipulative as much as just stopping yourself from stepping on a landmine unnecessarily um, in terms of people's expectations. Because if you, if you kind of put out a number, it's a sensitive to topic because obviously that for most people, it's one of the most important parts of selling the house, how much money they can get out of it. 
And if you don't broach, navigate that subject or set it up the way that Joe said, where I'm going to give you three numbers um, and kind of frame it in the context of, hey, this is pretty subjective. We'd make it as objective as possible, but every house is different. The market is unique. Um, if you don't frame it correctly, um, you can get, I've been, Sam and I went on an appointment with a guy. It was a very unique house. It had like a horse barn. It was on a main road. And I just, he was a very no-nonsense person. We basically like, it was very highly skilled to actually get the appointment in the first place. We walked in the door and he basically didn't even let us sit down. And was like, what's it worth? What's your number? And I started talking about it. I started the conversation like referencing another property that went for 850. And he basically like sank back into his shoulders, like wrote us off non-verbally and it was basically over at that point he because he like heard a number that he just wanted nothing to do with even though i was talking about a different house he just like wrapped that around us and basically showed us the door so you want to be able to navigate that uh process correctly so having running the numbers ahead of time making your cma your search set up and then having an educated strategy about how to walk them through that information is always helpful. And so I guess we, can, Joe, what's our plan right now? We're going to pick up, have, have somebody gonna, pick up or pick up or in. You want me to do the one I did today? Sure. Or, sure. Um, yeah, so basically let's just stick to this, man. I want to keep this to like 20 minutes. So I'm going to stop at like uh, 930. We have, we're going to do something else. We're going to watch a, a Ted talk video and talk about it. But um, uh, yeah, it should be straightforward. All, the only thing I care about is, it's Zillow, RPR, just dropping a pin, looking at the houses, which ones look the same. And then like three, three active, three under contract, three closed is really it, man. That's, that's, that's all I got. If you want to, yeah, I'll give you the screen. Is anybody around here in Monmouth and Richard County that's got a, a house that they want to, Jill. Just do, 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 do Sorry, I don't, I don't even do this yet. I'm just listening to you. Yeah, yes, I live in Monmouth County. <laughs> Joe, give me a, uh, give me a screen sharing. Uh, Jerome Smith Drive and one next door to me just sold and the one across the street diagonal for me just sold. Um, can you let so me I'm share? I'm Jerome Smith Drive. Joe, okay. Joe, yeah. screen share? Yeah, hold on. All right. Uh, All right. You said Joe. I thought you said Joe. Sorry. Let's do this. Uh, do I show you a little bit of a firecracker? I like it. Uh, All right. <laughs> I should shut up. <laughs> no, we need it. We need, we need a, uh, t a test dummy. <laughs> yeah, so Jill, put your address of your house in the chat box, and Gil will do a CMA on it. Okay. Mine is 10, and next door, I guess, is, I think to the, that side is 12, but, okay. Which one do you want me to do, 10 or 12? Do, do um, here, do, do 12, because I think that's the one that just sold. <laughs> that, that's too easy. Yeah. yeah, hold on. All right, stop it. Gil, all right, I want to stop this. Gil, I'm going to put an address in the, t in the chat box. You're going to do that address. Is that okay? Yeah. Gil, I, I love your enthusiasm, but uh, we're going to do this house. Can't do one that just did, because <laughs> give us the answer. Again, Jill, you're, you're, uh, you're <laughs> Sorry. I love you. I love you. Uh, we're, already, we're already best friends. <laughs> uh, I'm muting now. Bye-bye. Uh, how do I get to the chat room? Tell it to me. I'll type it in right now. Nope. I just put it in the chat room. Give me a chore. All right. Now you're in there. Dude, the one you went to today where you're like, I don't know, there's one in Brielle <laughs> that we said was worth six ninety nine. It sold for eight fifty. <laughs> That's a whole nother conversation. All right. So this is a house that um, is not popping up in the MLS. Right. So just do the, just do the, uh, there it is. Inspire. One of two things is gonna happen. It'll either show up in your search bar in the MLS to get that exact house, and there will be some past listing on it, which is a great starting point. Or if somebody's on the house for 20 years, you won't have that, and you're just kind of going off cold. I'll go to Google Maps, I got to find out exactly where the address is. And then I'll go to just a quick search in the maps and draw this thing on it. But I'm going to just look at this. I'm going to go to the history. 
I'll see what it closed at. It looks like rentals are in here. So we've got an expired property, 475 in 2005. We've got something more recent for rental, but we don't have anything closed in the last eight years. Um, I might look at this to see what I'm looking at. I'll go look at the last listing. Never seen this house before. And I'm just gonna see what I'm, what I, so when I look at other properties, I wanna know what's kind of similar to this. So I'm looking outside, it looks like a ranch. I'm gonna guess two or three beds, three bed, two bath. Uh, gauge the lot size, 85 by 110. It's a decent sized lot in Wanamasa. Single family, ranch, residential. Read the description real quick, taxes 6,400. I'll look at square footage if it's on here. It's not. Um, I'll scroll through the photos real quick and just see that this is fucking useless. Um, so um, then I'm gonna go to the map. If you wanna cheat or if you're short on time, you can go to Zillow and get a range. You can also go back into, um, from here in detail, you can go to Realist Tax Info and get the ABM market range and kind of gauge the two of those um, as just a ballpark. Um, but I like to use my intuition and kind of like guide myself towards it uh, the hard way, like from first principles, like build it up. When I say build it up, I mean like I'm just going into it um, blank. So we know this neighborhood, we're not gonna get anything like right on the water. It, so short version here, or the, the most objective way would be to just drop a pin right on the house and irrespective of everything, go out 1,500 feet or 2,000 feet. A mile is um, 5,200 feet or something like that. So if you go out 2,000 feet, we're going to get this whole neighborhood right here. I know there's probably going to be a bunch in here. I want to zoom out so I can see everything. So we just basically casted a net like into the ocean, like a big wide net. We just cast this circular net around this. A circle is great because it's super objective. If they, if, if you get into the house, especially if you don't know the neighborhood and they're going to say like, oh, on this side, like this is where all the bad kids live or that house, that's a totally different neighborhood. If you don't know the neighborhood really well, you won't know the difference between either side of um, Wicapeco or Sunset. Like you, you won't know each stretch. I kind of do know this area a little bit, but you won't know the difference if you're in a totally uh, blank area. So you can just use a circle and then, hey, a circle is a circle. It's a half a mile radius. Um, if you do know the area, you can make your own polygon around what is more of a reasonable spot. So then you go in here and this is now searching in that circle. It says exclusively of that listing number because we already searched for the listing number. So we want to um, add in here a status. And then we just select status from this list of things that we can field to our search criteria. And then we're gonna do active, not coming soon, nobody does that. Active under contract, close, expired, canceled. I'll even do temp off market. Usually there's nothing there, but I do wanna know the expireds. Active under contract, closed and expired at least. These other ones might come up with a couple. Now, the reason there's nothing else coming up, this picks up the dates. It'll default to a year um, October 15th of a year ago. If there's a ton of data, we can do a couple things. We can zoom in the circle, like same side of Wicapeco and Sunset. We could get into that triangle. We could do, do a shape right around here and then take out waterfront. Um, but I'm going to see what we get. So I'm going to take off the um, Boolean logic of only this. And it'll say all these statuses and it'll take a second to churn. And now I got 56 results. That's kind of a lot. We'll see where they fall in here and what this looks like. I'm gonna get a decent amount of properties if I stay on this side of the neighborhood and I'll get, a, I'll get a mixed bag, I'll get all the actives. I can always go back and make another circle. So if there's 56, I'll probably get what I want if I do this. And I'm gonna look a little bit more sophisticated if I kind of include uh, now, if I'm going on this listing appointment, I've never been here, I'll be like, hey, I included everything just this side of Wicapeco on this side of Deal Lake because it's a little bit more honed in. Then I'm going to go and take off the circle. 
This looks a little more deliberate. I put a little more time and strategy into it. You seem smarter and more of a local expert. And we still have 21 properties to look at. We've got one, two, three, four under contract. One, two, three, four active, one uh, expired, and the rest are sold. It's an active neighborhood. Uh, so that's cool. And then I'm going to go to list. I call this a totem pole. I'm going to go to price, sort tallest to smallest. And I know that nothing has sold in that triangle in the last year over a million. I'm going to go down and see the dog shit listing on the bottom. This house sold for 205. You get one bedroom, one bath, six days on market. Some investor bought this for the lot, it looks like. <clears throat> um, and I'm, if, you know, if I really want to know, I'll go and actually just scroll through and see what I get at either end of the market first. Kind of nice. Maybe it's just a rental. I'll look at the either end of the bell curve here. No photos inside. I'm sure it's beautiful. So for under 350, you're doing a full renovation in this triangle. This one's under contract, <clears throat> size house. Then I'm going to go all the way up to the top. Now, in the, um, look, is this house comparable to our other one? Definitely not. We had, our, I'm going to assume that hopefully from talking to the client, I'm going to know two beds, one bath in that zone. Or sorry, it was uh, three beds, two baths. So I'm going to start to look in here and see that I'm in this mid-tier band. Um, you can actually sort by bedrooms. I like to keep it by price. And I'll just start to look for ones that look kind of like something that might be in a similar ballpark of what we were looking at for our subject property. This one's one, one, not really a comp. This is four, two. I'm not going to exclude it yet. Three, two, 350. And I, I want to pick up actives just because it's under contract. I'll pick that up to see what buyers are looking for in the neighborhood. I'm just verbalizing my thought process as I'm going. I got an active one. I need an active. It looks like it's probably going to be in the same ballpark. And you see up here, it says results 21. Now I'm filtering down to selected for four. And when you save the search, it'll actually keep both. Um, so I want the, I want the wide net and then I want to hone it in. I got three twos here. This one looks like it's a ranch. That one should set up an alarm, right? The one that you just checked. Cause that's on the same street. Yes. Always keep a, always keep a, uh, always keep a, when you see the same street, that's like a ding, 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 ding. Right. If the neighbor's house and it's built by the same builder, you're super pumped. Uh, I'm going to do an active here. This is another one on Brian for active right on their street. If you think about this, the person lives on this street, you're driving past it. The sign might be three houses away. They might drive past it on their way home from work every day and saw that eight days ago when it popped onto the market, they're watching Zillow obviously and they're, I'm going to figure out what didn't sell, pick an expired. And then we got under contract to, um, so already we know that if hopefully I'm going to, I'm going to assume that this house, you know, from our calling or when we set the appointment, do we know if the house is updated at all or is it totally cold, Joe? You want me to give you a, a cheat sheet? So, so like, I, I, yeah, if we had called, we would probably know like, hey, have you done any updates in the last, since it sold in 2012? Correct. So what I would do is this is, um, so if you go back to where you, um, so when you saw the rent, so the only thing I would have done differently is when you saw that rental, we're like, oh, this is a rental. I would, so I would have dissected those, all those sales. Like you clicked on the most recent sale was it, like, I just know this house. It was a short sale and there was like three photos. Um, but if you went to like, look at the rental one, the rental one might have more photos. So if you go back, can you open up another screen? Probably, actually, you still, you already have it open. Um, if you click on it and go back to the like 1803 Bryan yeah, Avenue. Yeah, yeah. If this listing is correct, which so, I'm sure that it is. So it was rent. You saw that it was rented. So that's your cheat sheet, right? To like, see what it looks like right now. So then I'll go into photos.
So does this house look like a piece of shit? No. It's super nice and updated, bright and airy. This house looks sick. It's got a wood burning stove. This is awesome. Bathrooms are super clean and updated. It's got a sick backyard. Their bathroom. You got a nice big backyard. There's like a loft in the back. That looks awesome. So you're pumped. And then uh, another cheat sheet is like Zillow. Like Zillow might have photos from something. Like you always check Zillow because Zillow might have MLS is a total piece of never mind. But yeah, check Zillow because they might have it as well. Like yeah, one so we know, we know that this house is like this one might be similar square footage, but when we looked at this one, it's got these old kitchen. It's got look at this pink walls, wallpaper. Like you need to you need to put up seventy five to ninety thousand dollars into this house to make it like our subject property. Um, so if I figure that out, then I'm looking. I know that I'm going to be on the higher end of this. I'm going to look at under contract here. Let's see what this looks like. There's my 70 to 80. Even this is not, that kitchen is nowhere near the other one. Bathroom looks nice, but this bathroom doesn't. Check that out. So 425 in Wanamasa, you're not, you're, you're still, that has an extra bedroom it looks like. Here's one on the same street. Let's see what this has got inside. This looks similar. This looks like it was just done. Um, it looks vacant. It's got a full basement, big yard. This closed. Now I want to know when that closed. This is in June this year. So this is post coronavirus. Um, let's see what it listed at. Then you start to get into like what it listed for, what it sold for. So they listed at 409. The market right after coronavirus dictated, um, you know, maybe 6%, 5 or 6% over that list price in whatever, eight days or whatever this says it was. It was quick, 11 days. So um, this guy's a flipper. He does houses in point as well, Manila. So Gil noticed that like the lo the loft on the back of that house, like there's like a weird addition on that other house. So that's like, that's the thing. But like what Gil's trying to do is he's really getting to the, he's getting to, he's getting really, really close to where it needs to be when he's not going to really decide what the house is worth until he walks through it. Does that make sense? So he's preparing before he gets there. If he has three actives, he's doing, Gil, you're doing a great job, by the way. You do three actives, three under contracts, three closed. You have them stored. You bring them there. You walk through the house. You sit down at the kitchen table, and then you have the then you have the conversation. And then you make you, this. You, this starts to look more like it. Like this is a sick house. It is mostly updated inside. It's got a nice, cool backyard patio. This is comparable zone. It has uh, where's this zone? Uh, this spot. This this zone, this little like screened in porch is it's not totally interior. It doesn't have that um, um, wood burning stove and everything. But this one should definitely be ticked off. And I'm talking about this one. I think you're. This is active right now. Let's go a little higher to 550. Is that see what this was. How many days active is that one? Oh, eight days. Okay. So you can't really. It's hard to use it as a comp, right? Yeah, eight days. No, yeah, so in, if I'm sitting at the kitchen table with somebody, I'm gonna say, look, this is, if you go on the market right now, your competition is this house at 525. So if I'm looking at this and I have to like, um, oh, I gotta go, I'm like walking into this appointment at 1230. I, in my head, I'm thinking that like the, the right price, I call it the Warren Buffett number. I'm like, if you wanted this house to sell before Brian at the, the other house on the street here, uh, I would really go back. I want to. I want to know the exact differences because it's on the same street. By the time this gets listed, I would love to know what this is. I might call that agent and say, "Hey, have you had any offers?" and get get a gauge on that and have that information as I'm going into it. Um, but in a normal world, this would you know I would say it's like the list price might be four ninety nine, but like with this house here at five twenty five, you're you're probably right in that zone of four seventy five to four ninety nine. 
above this one because it's got that loft. And this was in June. We're now more recent at 525. The market's dictating a little bit more. I'd say you're up there. So now I'm going to select, I go back to the selected. And now this is the list that you're sitting at the kitchen table with. I'll sort this descending as well. Um, and this is, this is showing you that these are the ones that need the work. These were updated, updated, but six, uh, you know, four or five months ago. I don't know if we looked at Garvin here. This is nice, but not really on trend. Not as much space. 499 all day. 520, you, you can test it right at 525. I would list it at 515 to beat these people out. That's my like, if I'm hacking into a number, that's what I would think. So Gil, Gil, if I'm the owner and I can see the two houses on uh, Ryan Ave, one the one at 425, the one at 525, um, I'm the owner. My house is nicer than the one listed at 525. By the way, the owner, your house, if you're the owner, your house is always nicer than the other houses, just so everybody knows. Right. So, so my house, you have the best house. Yeah, I have the best house on the block. I've, I've seen that house at 525. Mine's better. Um, shouldn't we list it for more? You have permission to test the market right now. <laughs> you can. It, it, and so then this conversation is like, you're, then you're gauging. What I want to try to do is get there. If I really know their motivation first, if, I, if, if the seller is actually just trying to just like, is, is very objective about it and testing the market, I can say you have permission. You, you could go as high as 549, no sweat. To, and you wouldn't look crazy and you get a pass on days on market right now. Um, you could test it at that. If you, if you needed, if you needed to move for work, um, you want to be competitive against that house and s swoop in there and take them out in a normal market. I think the number is 499 this year. You could list it as, you know, up, up to 550 maybe, and you might actually get it. Um, with our, I don't know what this guy's marketing plan is. Right. Your house is nicer. You know, like, and by the way, Gil sold a lot of listings this year, but like he, he sells his houses. Like, I default to Gil because he's in the field. He knows more than any of us. Um, Yo, that's good, man. I like how you said that results are 21. Uh, selected as nine. Nine is what I'm going to the kitchen table with. And so what Gil is going to do is he's going to, when he sits at the kitchen table, and by the way, we have a listing appointment training on YouTube, which will break all this down. But Gil's going to say, yeah, this. He's going to be like, look, this is where I went. This is what I did. This is where I'm pulling data from. And he's just going to break it down. We started here. Now we're here by the way, and he got lucky on that one because he's got two houses on that street. Now, Gil, can I have the screen? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show a couple things or whatever um, that were, um, real quick. Um, I gotta find you, hang on. It's okay. Give control to Jeff. Go ahead. Cool, thanks. So if I go to here, You can control Gil. Oh, I can control your screen? Wait, what? I don't know what I'm doing. You're, you're on my computer. It's like you're using my computer. I don't know, I don't know how to do that. Just imagine you're on the Mom of the Shaman left right now. All right, cool. Oh my God, I can. All right, never mind. Wizzy, uh, what you see is what you get. You're, on, you're in the MLS. So funny, dude. All right. Anyway, uh, this one right here. So this one. So like, what I like to do too. Like, so I like to do some detective work, man. Like, all these listings tell a story, man. And I, I've said that a hundred times, right? So like, this one on Brian Ave. Um, yeah. So this one's active, right? Like that five twenty five number sounds insane to me, right? Like, but again, I'm gonna default everything to Gil because he's out in the field. That, so like what I'm going to do here is don't, always go into this, man, this realist tax info. So go to the tax card, man. This thing is awesome, right? This is going to tell you the story because when you're going to, when you're going to, if there's a house on the street of the same house you're going to, that person is going to know, they're going to know the story. So you better know the story too. So these tax cards, guys, get used to like learning how to read these things, right? What's important here is I'm like, obviously like lot block, 
A lot of times the realtor won't list the square footage. You can find that here in the characteristics part, right? You can find out the assessments. The assessment doesn't mean shit, right? The, whatever the township says the house is worth is never accurate, right? Um, like it's never, never, never accurate. It's not like Zillow where it's like, eh, sometimes like it's never accurate. Your characteristics here, something you want to always look at is your square footage. This house is 1400 square feet. So when you're at the kitchen table and they're like, wow, my house, you're gonna be like, yeah, your house is 300 square feet less than the other house. So relax, lady. So then what you're going to do- happened this morning. There's one that at the appointment this morning, there's a comp. You are one, one of the other ones that's comparable. And it was like 25% bigger. It's like 4,300 versus 3,200 square feet. Right. So right here, what I want you to look at is this. You're going to hear us use the phrase RPR, right? What that means is that's the National Association of Realtors uses an al algorithm to, uh, uh, to try and guess what a house is worth, right? Um, that's this right here, estimated value, 420. That's a good number to know. Also, they're giving you a range here, 382 to 458. My eyesight is 2020, you guys, of course. Uh, so that's why I'm like, yo, that shit is high, man. Like, and now I'm gonna be like, in my head, I'm like, that shit is high. And now I'm in here and I'm like, looking at the listing information. Now I'm getting down to the last market sale. Like, when did this person buy this house? Recording date. Oh, they bought this house uh, in 2018. So two years ago, they bought this house. Sale price, 385. So this person bought this house for 385 two years ago. Listen, man, I know the market's crazy, but I don't think Gil's a little bit better with percentages than I am. I'm not gonna try and do it in my head, but whatever the difference is between 385 and 525, it hasn't gone up that much, right? I, I don't think, uh, that's what, 25% or something, 20% or something? That's crazy. So like, that's a little wild, but you're gonna wanna know that information walking into the appointment. Now, again, everyone that's on the team, you'll notice that on our, on our calendar, we set listing appointment walkthroughs and we set listing appointments. If you're going to a listing appointment walkthrough, Ali, I want you to hear all this. So like when you're doing a listing appointment walkthrough, that's like more casual, right? Like, I'm just gonna go meet this person, get in a relationship. If you're on our team, you understand the difference. Like I'm gonna go there, talk to them. You don't have to zone in on this information, right? But if you are a, uh, if you know you're going on a listing appointment, like Gil today, he went on a, a listing appointment. I was like, dude, I sent him so many notes. And I'm like, dude, you're going to want to know this, 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 and this. Like if you're going on a listing appointment, you, uh, you want to look at it. If you're going, you know, Sam Marks, if you're going to 6th Avenue in Neptune, I really don't care if you open up your computer before you get there. But if you're going to Howell to a property that's on an acre and you don't really know that area, take 20 minutes the night before or the morning before. Like I used to just always get up. Like I'd be like, shit, I'm going to get up a little bit early in the morning and do the CMA or I'm going to go whatever. Cause what the, um, what's going to happen is the administrative side, the lead listing coordinator in the organization is going to drop the pin, put it in your MLS. You're going to be able to like, that way you can do it really fast at the table. But like, Again, just know, um, Gil, can I get hop in here and use your screen again? Yeah, I was going to show one more thing, the, the actual CMA. Go ahead. So, like, the, uh, so like uh, where's 18? So, this, um, so this is the subject house, right? And then the history you know, don't blow over the history, man. Go in here. You can look at this stuff, like, and then, like, know the history and, like, you know, when there's, like, four or five different, like, 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 it's been listed this many times or whatever. One, it expired. One looks like it closed. Then it looks like it closed again. And I go in there and I'll read all the descriptions because some, some might say more than others and, and kind of cruise through there. Another thing I like to look at, too, in these things is, um, in the tax card, you can see like what they owe, right? So you know, like this is really, if we ever go through like a short sale situation, right? Like when you go into the tax card, you can kind of go in there and you could see, um, you can see what they owe, man. Like, you know, if they're close to, you just know what they're, it says what they mortgage. So you have an idea what they owe, which is important. Also, um, what, um, So what I'll do is this, 1803, Brian. So 
So I just look, I always look at the Zillow. Whenever we're going to any listing appointment, we have the RPR and we have the Zillow because we know a hundred, remember how I said before, sometimes Zillow has like better photos. Like it's just like, they just, they just have the best platform, whatever. And so like, they'll pull the best photos. If the house is listed five times in the last 10 years, they'll have the best photos on Zillow. So like that way, you know what you're walking into, right? So like the homeowner has seen the Zestimate. They know what Zillow says. That's going to be a talking point. So know what that says. So Gil said 499, blah, 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 blah. If you walk into this, you'd be like, hey, what do you guys think your house is worth? And they're like, well, Zillow says 450. We want to list at 475. That's the end of your conversation, you guys. Does that make sense? Cool, 475. That's exactly what I think as well. Let's get it on the market. And then especially in the market we're in now, let's just, uh, let's just, uh, let's let the market dictate the value, which is really what's happening anyway, right? Yeah, and the, the market's dictating the value, it's either happening quickly and the, and the buyers are there, or it's taking a long time because the sellers are greedy. Yeah, I saw-, uh, that, saw that, that, That's why the, like, the range, two things have happened this year. The range has widened. So houses are selling when they're listed way higher. It's taking a little bit longer if you're really, really high. Like the, the sellers have just, got it in their head that they have all the leverage and they just stretch the top of the market. They think they can get way more than they can. It's worth it to have the listing. So my approach is always just to be very straightforward. Like I'm definitely, I'm not doing the uh, seller any justice. If I'm not saying 470, like the range that I think I said was 475 to 499. And uh, so I think, <clears throat> you know, all, all things being equal, I think it's 499. And then you, you're going to stand out compared to that 525 will you, number. Will you talk about the range. Like when you go there, you like give the seller, like if I'm not giving you any clues on what I think my house is worth and I'm like, Gil, so on this house, if I'm the seller and I'm like, Gil, okay, cool, dude, you showed me 525, blah, blah, blah. What are you listing my house at? 499. I mean, I, if, if some, sometimes people want, like you can gauge that they're like, yo, shut the fuck up and tell me one number. And like those people, you want to come with confidence and just be like, you're, this is what your number should be. And that's either going to go one of two ways. They'll either understand it and want to hear why, or they're just, they're going to have a number that they already made up their mind in their head, what they think it's worth. And they're going to think you're an idiot. What if you're wrong? Like the 850 guy, he wanted me to say a number. The first one out of my mouth, he just wrote me off and showed me the door. So I either read that wrong or. Which is fine. You don't want to work yeah. that anyway. So you know my my concern here is that so when i would go to a listing appointment i would give a range and the only reason i gave a range was because like i only gave them a range if they were too high i wanted to say that lower number so that the price reduction conversation starts already i know because i know that you have the price reduction conversation at the listing appointment how do you my how do you bring that into the conversation because you definitely do it and you're definitely good at it because you get price reductions and you get your houses sold if they're listed too high, how do you bring that in? Like, so if I'm here and I'm like, all right, 499, cool, man. I want to start at 525. How do you handle that? I think you just answered, did you just answer that with Sam? Yeah, I, I just say, look, uh, we, we came into this knowing that this is a unique market and it's the market's a little irrational. We can definitely test the market at, at numbers that's, that would in a normal world be unreasonable. We do have an election coming up. We're going into the tail, the, traditionally slower time of the season in the winter um nobody knows what the future is going to hold interest rates sh should stay low to keep up demand but we can definitely test the market i think in a rational world excluding out coronavirus excluding out this crazy election year all these other factors i think the range is more like a realistic range should be like uh for like i said 475 to 499 um so you i've said those numbers out loud we can test it at kind of whatever you want as long as then I say like, once we go live, then we'll have data on the back end. Right now we're speculating. It's a subjective thing. We don't know who the buyer pool is in a week or two weeks or three weeks, whenever we're actually going to be live on the market. We don't know what the results of the election are going to be in three weeks and how that's going to impact things. Um, so once, once we're live, we'll have real data to talk about. And that's one of the other ways that we set ourselves apart is we have data that we review every single week about what's happening on the market. If there's an offer, we're talking about that offer and what our strategy is in negotiating it to maximize that opportunity. If there's no offer each week, you're going to talk to me and I'm going to present, I'm going to bring data and show you what's happening. And if it's crickets, if there's no, if, if our views and we have a marketing plan that works. So 
roughly 100 properties in the last 12 months. So we know what that marketing plan does and the results on average are above the rest of the competition in the market. So when that plan gets tested against this house in this neighborhood at this time, we will then have data to come back and discuss. And then we'll be able to navigate exactly what's happening in that area. If we're getting a bunch of showings, then cool, we can hang out at that number and we can get feedback and try to procure an offer out of that and start a conversation with somebody and see how high we can get. If it's crickets in the market, then we'll have, then we know the market's maybe correcting back towards what's more rational in that original range that we talked about, 475 to 499. And we still want to maximize it, but we'll know where we're at. And right now, this most effective strategy is to kind of, unless you need to be out of the house, uh, you can definitely get away with starting a little high and then making a course correction in the first week or two on the market, maybe three. You know, I'm gauging how, how motivated they are. If they're pretty motivated and they're like, all right, cool, let's try it. And they're cool about it. Then I'll be like, we'll try it for two weeks. And then after two weeks, if the, if the action isn't there, then we can have that conversation to be right where we're at. And then we know we're going to get something. Thanks, Gil. Um, dude, Gil, you crushed that, dude. You did a great job. Um, I would have, uh, it's probably why you get so many listings and so many people trust you to work with you. Um, t hey, team, uh, Tommy, Sam, Lynette, Ali, any questions, guys? Tommy, was that helpful? Was that valuable? Absolutely. Cool. Give me a, give us an aha. Uh, I like the detective work you did to go back to when they bought the house, see what they bought it for. And uh, like you said, the, the square feet of the house, like, like you said, like the other one might be 300 feet, square feet bigger. That's why it's priced like that. It's good to have that knowledge uh, just so you're not stumped if they ask you. And uh, yeah. You got to be, you got to be on your toes, man, because like what Sam said is so on point, dude, every house, uh, we're, by the way, we're skipping the Ted talk, by the way, the, um, the, um, the, uh, every house you go to, you will be like, you'll, you'll know you'll, you have sold every house on that street. Right. And you're going to the one house you haven't sold and you sit down and you're going to know what it's worth, what it's going to sell for, how long it's going to take to sell. And that seller's going to be like, they're going to call bullshit on your whole CMA. They're going to be like, yeah, well. Dude, my house, dude, my house. Do you guys know that I have like, what, I have a bidet. I have like, dude, there is like a ceramic squirrel in my backyard. So like, it's definitely worth $50,000 more than Bob's house. By the way, Bob's a jerk. Like, am I right, Gil? They go in there and they're like, their house is superior. So like, you have to know, you've got to be able to like toggle in and out of the MLS and know where the differences are, right? Like Gil saw it on that one on Brian at the greenhouse. It was like, dude, there's a weird thing in the background. There's an addition on that house, right? So it's different. And that's it. Therefore it's 1800 square feet where the other one's 1400 square feet. It's simple. It's really, really simple stuff, man. And like going through it and like looking at the updates and things like this, I'd be like, listen, dude, look at, and, and I always have my computer open and I'm ready to toggle back and forth. Like, you know what? There's two brand new bathrooms. Like that frameless, that frameless shower door is $1,900. Like I know that that's a $2,000 frameless shower door. You guys have to update your whole bath. So they have two bathrooms that are probably about 15 grand each. That's why that house is 500 and yours is 450. You know, like being able to have those conversations um, uh, are good. And also like my, what I would go to, the guy that bought in two, two years ago at 385 and I was in the market for 525, I would look at those two photos and see if he did anything. And if he didn't do anything, I'm gonna tell my seller and be like, dude, you're 475, you're 499. This guy is just testing the market. He thinks that he can cash out right now. And he only bought it two years ago. He's probably testing the market. He just refied. Yeah, he's just testing the market. I'm gonna show one last thing. Um, what I'm doing is casting a super wide net. I did the whole township or whatever. And you know, maybe I'll um, hone this in a little bit here. I'm gonna get this, this um, Probably shouldn't even get this spot that's closer to Allen Hurst, but I'm gonna anyway. Uh, so I'm getting this southeast quadrant of, uh, I selected just the entire township. I'm gonna look at 87 in the past year. Now I'm gonna go to CMA and do one line CMA. If you have a super analytical person and they think that this is, this is something that helps with people when they think their house is worth 550 when it's not or shouldn't be. Um, so this is pulling up just all these houses and this is fantastic. I said, I said two to four beds. So I honed it in. I said, waterfront. No, I know the min max average and median. I'm going to get some stats on the neighborhood here. 
and I know that the average is 4.45. So uh, what's this one? The original listing price and the sale price. So selling maybe 5% under list, list to sold ratio it looks like, right? So I know that these are closing about at roughly 450 is the average for this. This is expired properties. We got our, the higher end looks like it's expiring. Uh, 600, these, these are probably overpriced. That's the reason they're expiring. Um, but I'm gonna look at all these and I'm gonna say, all right, the average price, I, I might write these down and I'm gonna say, look, um, I'll take square footage. I'll take 267. You guys should like just jot this down. 267, I'm gonna get how many units this was. Where is this? It'll, it'll tell me how many. I should have actually taken out the expired. I'm gonna do that manually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Let's say 17, I'm gonna take out 17 there. So there's 70, prop 70 properties sold in that Southwest quadrant with an average days of 55, 272 bucks a square foot. So I'm gonna look at that. Then I'm gonna go back. I might screenshot this so I can remember it. I might even put it in my listing presentation if this is like a really sick one. I know I'm competing against a bunch of people for. Then I'm gonna go back and somebody's gonna, you know, what's the market doing in my neighborhood or whatever. I'm gonna go back here and change this day to, um, I'm gonna go back a year, sold date, 2019. 2018, 2018, 2019. So this is before Corona, the, the exact same window of time before in the, in the year before coronavirus. And then this is the year with coronavirus right in the middle of it. I'm gonna run the same CMA. Same criteria, same CMA, same circle. And then I'm gonna go back in and find my price per square foot, my number of units. And what I'm probably gonna see is there is a little less units with a higher price. Eighty minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So there's only 60 sold instead of 70. So 10 less sold, what's the math? It's 15%, something like that, 18%. In 59 days on market versus the other one was 70, I think. Um, we're just comparing all these. Uh, average price 450. I would go back and forth and say, you know, and then these numbers don't look too crazy different. Let me see. Um, what was this average? Average square foot, sold per square foot. Yeah, so the average price per square foot went up 30 bucks or that's like 13%. I would actually do that math. It'd be like, what's the percentage increase from 267 to 232? And you could know that number. You could do the average sale price. Average sale price didn't really change all that much. The price per square footage did. Um, so you can kind of, you know, there is a thing in accounting like data, you know, you can tell any lie with the data, with data, but if you're trying to make a point to get somebody to be, we know that that house should be listed at 499. So if they're thinking 550, I'm going to spin this data and say, look, the average price point in the market was um, 445 this year. Or I'll, I'll, I might phrase it this way. I'd be like, hey, you know what the average price point last was last year? 60 houses sold. Average price point was, would you guess what the average price point is between two and four bedrooms? And they're, they try to make them take a guess. Be like, it was four hundred and fifty-one thousand two hundred fifty-five dollars. Do you want to take a guess at what the average is this year in the same in the comparable time window in the same exact circle? What's that number this year? And they're probably going to say five hundred thousand. And then if you come in and you're like, it's actually only four thousand dollars more, four hundred forty-five thousand six hundred fifty-eight dollars and forty-three cents. If I was able to like say that to the penny, be like, that's actually only a one and a half percent average price increase. Do you think that justifies a 17% price increase in the entire house for this one? 
what did they do differently to that house? And you're kind of saying like, hey, reality check here. The market's not that much crazier than everything else. Every house is unique, but on average, it's not like the town is up 20%. Some of them around here are nine and a half percent I've seen. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. It's a little, for the really analytical people, um, that tends to help you, tends to help you gauge what the neighborhood has done. Cool. Um, any questions, you guys? Uh, I'm going to go around and look for some ahas. Gil, you did a great job. Um, that was awesome. Um, Sam, give me an aha. So does it make sense to list that house with us today, Joe? Uh, I'm listening at 499 all day long. If you're telling me I'm getting. I'm trying getting... to get the listing on Bryant. You got it. You got the job. Guess what? You got the job. Congratulations. I'll send you paper. Uh -huh. Do yeah, my, my aha was from uh, what Gil said is like, um, you said I've said that number out loud, right? So it's like kind of, there is a lot of negotiation going on in that in that conversation. I know this this is about running a CMA, not about a listing agreement, but, um, or not about a listing appointment, but once those numbers have been said, uh, it's hard to kind of backtrack. You know, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. So I think it's important to not try and like, Tommy, I'm sure you've been on the phone and like people have said like, what do you think the house is worth? It's a waste of time to try and guess or give them a number. Um, Cause then you can't go back if you just like guessed and screwed up. So that's right. And I got to be smart about what you say, what you don't say. That's what, awesome. Someone asked you that over the phone. That's like, uh, that's exactly why we should meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Allie, do you have an aha you'd like to share with us? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of liked how you guys both had said something that really stuck out to me. Um, Joe, you mentioned that like every house that's listed tells a story. Um, and then Gil, when you kind of showed us the CMA analytics, I thought that was really cool because um, it just shows that you did your research and um, if they, you know, you're prepared to kind of like gear that conversation for like why a reality check it is, it should be this price instead of the price that's in their head and like showing them all the numbers and all the research. Um, just showing them like, I know what I'm doing and I'm just trying to help you out that this could be a long dragged out process. Or if you kind of just, you know, listen to what I'm saying, what I'm doing, I'm, I, I've done this many times. So I thought that was kind of cool. Just preparing and kind of knowing what you're walking into. That's awesome. And just so everyone knows here on the call, um, we share ahas because we come from the heart of a teacher and you might've heard something that someone else didn't hear that might help them. And uh, I appreciate you sharing that, Allie. Uh, Lynette, do you have an aha for us? Is Lynette still here? Yeah, I'm here. Um, just seeing how the whole MLS works and all the different features to obtain this information was pretty cool for me. Cool. That's awesome. Rad. All right, cool. Um, so, well, see, like, you can whip this up in 15 minutes if you've done it a million times. If you are, um, if you haven't done it a hundred times, then you should do it a hundred times on your own for fun. Like look at how, look at your friends' houses, look at houses that you see have sold, like run, when you drive past the house and you're interested in it or whatever, like you see something that comes up on Zillow that looks cool. Just like practice the process. Cause even just navigating this antiquated piece of shit at UI from the MLS is tricky. And so if you practice with it, you'll learn more features. You'll be able to do that. And if you, if you're doing this live with the people at their dining room table and you've got it all pulled up and you can navigate it very quickly and you can, have an intelligent conversation about it. You know what numbers are going to come up and where to find the square footage on the RVM sheet. Like the, you're doing, you're doing two things. You're talking about what you're talking about, but you're also showing, you know, your shit and you've done this a million times. So if you're stumbling around in it or it's taking a really long time, you're kind of, you're non-verbally telling them that you haven't done it a million times. If you have done it a million times, it's going to, that's going to come across subconsciously. You don't have to say it. They'll know just by how fluent you are and fluid you are in the process. Great job. Awesome. Um, Jill, thanks for joining us today. What did you think? Sorry, I was, that was great. I, I was very interested. I took a lot of notes, even though I don't know what everything is. Um, I really liked that last part about the percent by square footage how you said it wasn't actually all that much it's very interesting and i'm still wondering like side note why the virus made the market go crazy like listening to you guys it's just interesting and your youtube video about that yeah <laughs> that'd be great <laughs> I, I actually wrote that i'm like why would a virus make the market go <laughs> so are you getting your are you becoming a realtor yes 
guys, look at this. Jill, everyone, uh, hold, let me introduce you to Jill. Jill lives in Ocean Township. She lives in Wayside. She's getting her real estate license and she's checking out our organization. How cool is that? That's awesome. It's nice to just listen to you all. Obviously, I have not done this yet. I don't know a whole lot, but it was great to hear it all. And I do it for fun. <laughs> I look on Zillow for fun. <laughs> yeah, Jill's very talented. She's <laughs> Uh, she'll do really well in this. Um, cool. Well, listen, Joe, I'll reach out to you to check in and say hi. Thank, Thank you so much you. for joining Thank us. Thank you, guys. I will. Uh, and Allie, you, could, you connected Jill with our Monday uh, morning meeting as well. So yeah, it's join. nice to see your face, Allie. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Welcome. All right, All right team. Good job. Good job to everyone. I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Later. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.